caller. Thank you for holding. Uh, yes, Sam, good evening. And a wonderful topic. And Thank you. before I go too far, I also eat that pork. I'm going to eat from the rooter to the tutor. <laughs> and I've been eating them since I was very young. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is what we was raised up on, so it's mm-hmm. all right with me. But, mm-hmm. you know, what? I, and it's so wonderful for the doctor to distinguish the difference between the genetic and the obesity part mm-hmm. of the diabetes because I'm just going to use me, only me. I'm 62 years old. I played ball all my life. Mm-hmm. And when I came up, that I noticed the difference between then and now. We stayed in parks, yes. in school. You had gym, you had a physical gym, you had recesses. So you run, you jump, you play. Uh, you you go home and you do your work and you try to hurry up and get outside and you plan and you you just steady constantly moving. And this went through with me all through my life. Now, mm. I did see a few people as I played, like I said, I played for a long time. That, uh, and they were slender, you know, in good shape. But they genetically had the diabetes, mm. and they ran through their family. Mm. But now you see more bigger people, more big, especially children. But, if you know, maybe society might be a blame for that because if you look outside, you're not going to see no kids. You drive past a park, you don't see the kids out there. You don't see them playing ball. The gym's not full. They're not playing basketball. So... I really, and also in the schools. Now, in other culture, they out there running during the winter. They're playing their soccer. They're running. They got the gyms. Maybe they more affordable. Uh, now, I'm not going to distinguish the healthiness of eating. Because, like I said, I eat the rudder to the tutor. I eat what I want. But I noticed that what we did when we was younger, we ate more vegetables. We mm. had a lot of vegetables with our meal. So right. We might have the pig feet or the tails or the ears that day, but you had just some vegetables. Right, right. But uh, again, I think a lot of, lot of we do not move. You know, kids lay around like say drinking pop and eating potato chips, and they don't move. You know, they don't yeah. know they well, don't know nothing about playing or running or whatnot. But maybe society dictates that because you know you be outside, people shooting and crazy. A lot of parents don't want their kids out. But listen, I don't want a hog to show up. That was just a quick comment well, and a good show, too. Thank you, caller. You're a very good example. Uh, Dr. Senja is going to explain to us. We said that we asked you to to, to, li- to listen for these numbers. We, we told you you would hear 5-2, right? You said 5-2-1-0. Did you say that yet, uh, Dr. Senja? That's correct. 5 two, one, zero, that number. What does that first explain to people what that 5 means? So when I see my patients in my office, starting at a, around a year old or so, I start implementing my 5210 rule. The 5 stands for they should have at least 5 fruits and vegetables per day. The way that I try to make that very practical is I tell them with their cereal they can have a banana, they can have an apple for a snack, they can have some spinach with their lunch, they can have another fruit perhaps for a snack later, and then with their dinner they can have two vegetables, some broccoli and cauliflower. There you are, five fruits and vegetables in one day. So many people um, don't even have one fruit or vegetable a day. Uh, As far as children are concerned, um, I think when they're in the schools, they do have some guidelines, so they try to implement a fruit and a vegetable in the lunch that they provide. But if a child isn't in school, this may be a problem. The two in the 5210 rule stands for there should be less than two hours of television as well and or um, leisure sedentary when you're sitting down computer activities in a day so less than two hours where you're sitting watching television for your children and or on the computer if they're on the computer doing homework that's a different thing but if they're just sitting playing a video game or doing some idle type of recreational computer things that requires them to sit down it should be less than two hours a day the one of the 5210 rule is every child should exercise at least one hour per day. One hour per day of physical activity. As the caller um, prior was just speaking about, recess. There is um, still recess, at least in some of the schools, and I think this is very important because usually in the younger ages, they still do run around and play during that time. It also allows them to have a, a mental break um, and some socialization. Um, and excuse me, in our household, um, physical activity is something that you know we on a daily basis 
you know, at least try to make a mental effort to incorporate it for our children. Um, this school year, we live about four blocks from our school, from our, from my daughter's school, and I took the initiative um, to walk her to school on, on most days um, that I could as the school year started. And sometimes Dr. St. Jean um, would walk as well, and sometimes he would pick up my daughter. And, and I try to play a little soccer, also. right? A few times, but you know. And I encourage you to do kids, that. Right? <laughs> you know, we do have video games in our home. Um, I did make a an effort to or to purchase the Wii game, uh, not to promote any product, but they have different types of video games now where you're up and you're moving and you're active. So these are the type of things you know you want to be a role model as, as such. My husband takes a run and he goes for walks on his own, and he you know actually encourages my seven year old daughter to do the same. And sometimes, you know, it's sort of a punishment. If you're not behaving properly, we won't be able to go on our walk today. And she straightens up. Um, so you want to make it a positive thing in your household. And at least one hour a day is so important for our children. And lastly, sorry. That's okay. Zero. The zero is, um, I recommend zero ounces. That means no juice or sweetened beverages for your children. Uh, the American Academy of Pediatrics and the American Academy of Family Physician, Physicians, excuse me, they recommend four to six ounces of juice, um, no more than that a day, but I say zero. You don't need it. It's not necessary. Um, at four to six months old, when babies are able to start drinking juice, I usually tell my parents, yes, you are able to, but you shouldn't. It's not necessary. It's bad for your teeth. Um, it could lead to you being more overweight. Some children, they drink lots of juice, their appetite is down, um, or sweetened beverages, and then they don't eat as well. Some children, so they may not be overweight, but they still may not be healthy because they're not taking in proper nutrition. Sometimes children become more overweight because of the extra calories they're taking with these sweet beverages. So I say zero juice, zero sweetened beverages. Definitely no soda, whether it's caffeinated or not, it's not healthy for children. The carbonation that's in um, soda can also be associated with osteoporosis, which is a thinning of the bones. And that's something um, maybe 20 years ago or so, there was some research that showed um, they had started putting soda, soda machines in um, local high schools. And they were finding over years and over time, finding thinning of the bones in the, in the teenagers. Mm. Um, basically osteoporosis, in which they linked to... Um, carbonated beverages such as soda yes and in fact we, I, I want to show you a quote here that um, from from uh, First Lady Mich Michelle Obama uh, as she, she speaks about uh, in a campaign to to get fit what's the name of the program I forgot. The, the let's move program let's move uh, let's move and others that's that she that she certainly advocates I want them to be able to engage in life with the energy the endurance the focus as she said because we all know that they're going to need it and to meet the challenges that they face a long way from here. So one of the things that we know, if we do not have that level of energy, I mean, we are lethargic, right? We are not able to produce. We have these types of problems. And it is very important for us to think about uh, the, the obesity is not just an issue of ecstatics. Obesity is something to do with, uh, with our health. Uh, Dr. Sejan, do you have any final words here for, for the audience? We All good things are coming to an end and we're about to wind down. Do you have any, any last words? I know that your, your mom, uh, Michelle Hall, your father, Conrad Hall, and then others that you may want to say a quick hello, a shout out, as we say in the shy town, <laughs> we want to give, <laughs> uh, go right ahead. It's coming up there. Well, yeah, sure. Hello to all my family <laughs> and extended family out there who may be watching. But I think um, to end on the note of, you know, obesity and being overweight is a serious health condition in our children, and we can make a role, um, a big role in our children by one, us being good role models. So if we give them healthy food choices, in, in your home and when you go out to restaurants, allow them to have choices of the apple slices versus a salad. Don't give them the option of french fries. Give them options, but give them healthy options. Don't bring soda in your home. Don't bring juice in your home. Um, definitely none of the, the pre-sweetened beverages. If you do choose to um, allow them to have beverages, let it be minimally once a day, four to six ounces, and it should be 100%. Mm. Moving. I think the First Lady Michelle Obama is just right on target to talk about moving more and being more physically active and you being active with your child is something that can really help make a difference. Thank you so very much. Again, you're watching the Do's and Don'ts of Parenting. I'm your host, Dr. Peter K.B. Sejan, CEO of Quality of Life Solutions. 
founder of the Peaceful World Movement, sitting for Dr. George E. Smith. We want to tell you, remind you, of course, that our show was about how to be a better parent in terms of how to raise healthy children. We want to thank you for watching. We want to thank our callers for calling. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here, Dr. St. John. Thank you for having me.